I just made a promise to her that I'm, I'm gonna stop bringing that up. <laughs> only one. You're the only one. Well, they don't go as deep as I go, Ava. <laughs> you know, you know a thing or two about research. You know all your amazing projects. I'm sure you did a lot of research. <laughs> Facts, right. facts, okay, facts. this one we're about to talk about now, you couldn't have made this without doing the research. Yes. Right? It's true. It's okay. True, sir. Um, <laughs> and so I want to welcome you back to the show. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this woman is great um, for so many reasons. Uh, when they see us is one of them. A big round of applause. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Middle of nowhere is another one. Yes. <laughs> Give that big round of applause. Selma is another one. Give that a big round of applause. Yeah. No misses. I will follow is another one. Give that a big round of applause. <laughs> this is the life. And I could go on and on and on um, for the way that she tells stories, I think, is uh, so necessary. It's been such an additive to uh, cinema, to film, uh, to our community. This movie that she made, uh, called this new film called Origin um, is so powerful for so many reasons. Mm -hmm. um, it's based on a ad it's an adaptation from a book called Cast: The Origins of Our Discontents mm -hmm. by Isabel Wilkerson. Brilliant book, brilliant movie. I think we all should go see this movie, especially now as we enter this uh, presidential race and what we're starting to see, what we're starting to witness in our country. There's a lot of history that's being swept under the rug now. People are just lying in our faces about what actually took place, how this country was built, how other p countries were built. History um, is not our st it's not true. History has been very inaccurate um, over the years. And um, this movie is going to open people's eyes to a different way of seeing society and how it's been built. Uh, racism and how it's used and utilized the caste system, which I'm gonna ask her to um, uh, break down momentarily. But I want to say thank you, Ava DuVernay, for the work that you put out into the world. Yes. The vibrations that you put out in the world. I went and saw this movie by myself last night, mm -hmm. and I didn't feel alone. Mm -hmm. Ain't that something? Yes. Ain't that something? Wow. Right. Wow. And people of all walks of life were in that theater. Mm -hmm. All walks of life, and we all applied it. Mm. <laughs> you know, okay. different religions, different yes. tax brackets, race, yep. different places in the caste system. Yes, yes. And we all applauded this movie. Ava DuVernay is here. Please give her a big round of applause. Yeah. Ava! Yay, I always love coming here. Yeah. Thanks for welcoming me. I would, wouldn't have it any other way. This is why I do this, for moments like this and for people like you. Thanks. We're just conduits. Hey, I, I hear you. That's a good word. We're, we're all That's right. That's a good word. Isn't yeah. that what we are? It is. The, it is. These visions that you get when you want to make a movie like Origin, you know, um, what, what, what do you, what, where do they come from? Where do ideas come from? Yeah. You know what I mean? It just Sometimes they just hit me strong, and I know they're for me. I don't yeah. even know if it's a calling or... I don't know what to say. I just know that when I hear it or when I read it, I know it's for me. And they don't come often. Like okay. It comes on strong. Mm -hmm. Like, you must do this. This is yours. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, I take it on as, as, as my responsibility to do, and then I, I work hard until I deliver it to people. Wow. How do you, because now you got the studios, right? You got the facility built that yeah. you built up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what's it called again? Array. Array, yes. right? And then how many employees do you have now? Um, Couple dozen. Couple dozen, yeah, right? Yeah. And are you there every day? I am there. I, if I'm not on the road or if I'm not on the set. When I'm on the set, I have about a thousand people working okay. with me. Okay. But at home, at a race, it's a couple dozen. Yeah. How do you balance the, the, the professionalism, the, the business aspect with the creative aspect? How does it not get convoluted? It's a bit of a juggling mm -hmm. point, but I'm a writer, director, and producer. So the producer is the business side of the movies. Mm -hmm. So I'm on set doing all of those aspects, all of the aspects of that job, which it just all is one thing to me. You know, mm -hmm. if you're lucky enough to be a creative person and you also know about business, right, then you're going to be able to protect yourself much more in your expression and have more freedom because you're not relying on someone else. Yeah. So I find that they go hand in hand. They go hand in hand. Yeah. I'm wondering what a Ray is like to be a, a actor or actress that comes uh, through that company. We had the cast of Sisters mm -hmm. um, here the other day. Heather B., who had to step out, um, is did season six. Six of sisters, oh, right? Was she on six. There? six. Yeah, she was on oh, there, okay. and she spoke about being on the set with Tyler Perry at his studios. Uh -huh. They treated her like royalty. Mm -hmm. The the actors and said that they get treated like royalty. Yeah. What is it like being in a ray? Uh, well, on our sets, I feel like everybody's royalty. Okay, and so you can't forget about the crew. 
mean, these are the people who are waking up first. They're waking up when it's dark. They're setting up the lights. You know, they're bringing in the porta potties. They're bringing in the food. And so it's important for me that everyone be treated, um, be treated well. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, yes, I want the actors to be treated well, but I also want the grips and the gaffers and the camera people mm -hmm. and the hair and makeup people to be treated well. Mm -hmm. And so I try to create like a flat system where you know disrespect is not allowed. None of that is accept accepted. And we have like less hierarchy, less mm -hmm. you're better than this person. So, um, so that's something that we, you really have to cultivate because the way our society is set up you know some people are stars and some people are not mm -hmm. yeah. and um, we try to make it so that everyone feels like they have a seat at the table I saw you speaking very highly and my goodness I have to commend you for this Ava for really bringing reverence to um, the extras on yeah. set they're the bot you know they're sorry go ahead yeah no especially for a film like this where yeah. they're so necessary and yeah. you mentioned how they're like um such a necessary brushstroke yes. in this like picture yes. that we're painting when did you understand was it from jump as soon as you entered filmmaking that you really understood the importance of every single person that's on camera or did you have to develop that because you don't really hear that and the way it translates for the consumer of course you're just focused on like who is the movie star who is yeah. the main character but where did that love for community in terms of your full cast come from yeah it's a great question i used to be a crew member i used to be a publicist mm -hmm. before that's mm -hmm. how you did, did we meet one? We met a few like, times. Well, you don't remember every way, time we met. Don't don't do that to okay, yourself. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> but I used to be a publicist, so I used to be on set as a crew member, mm -hmm. and um, so I would see the ways in which some people are treated better than others. But when we talk about cast, and we'll talk about it a little bit, cast is basically saying there are some people at the bottom and some people at the top. Yep. And this is the way that that society is structured. On a film set, the lowest of the low, in the way that they're treated, are extras. They are in a separate area. They're segregated out. Mm -hmm. They are given the really the worst food. Mm -hmm. They're usually in the cold or they're outside or they're in a bad tent far mm -hmm. away from the thing. They're shuttled in. They don't even know what scene they're in. They're just told to stand there and hold this mm -hmm. cup. You know what I mean? And it's disorienting. They're making not, not a lot of money. And they're working long hours. And I just thought that is a horrible mm -hmm. a day. I don't know why people do it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, people are doing it for, 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 for income, obviously, but they're not treated well. And so I like to talk to them. I mean, it's very mm -hmm. basic. Mm -hmm. I like to talk to them. I like to bring them in. At minimum, I like you to know what scene you're in. Right. Yeah. Like, what the <laughs> yeah. heck you're doing here. Yeah. 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 Right. And then also to feel a part of the movie. Mm -hmm. And so, I, you know, that has added um, such a beautiful, like you said, brushstroke to the way that I paint. Mm -hmm. Because now I have all these people, all these faces, all this emotion, all this energy. Why would you leave that on the table just because you were told we don't talk to them? And that's the same way that we are in society. Mm -hmm. We're leaving people out. Yeah. People are left out of the of, of the conversation they're not around the table i was just walking through congress yesterday met with some congressmen and every every uh, every hall i went down every space i went in there were statues of white men mm. yeah. like no one else is even there mm -hmm. like no one else is in the architecture of these spaces that are halls of power we're we're invisible and so we've been told that people are invisible we've been told that you can't talk to these folks they have no value and wherever that happens in your life you have to challenge it got a challenge so on our set it's the it's the background actors. That's the way to do also it. Also known as extras. I don't like extras. Ah, I think background not... actors. Background, background actors. actors. Background actors. I like that. <laughs> yeah. So you you eliminated the cast system in your on your. We sets. tried. Yeah, you tried it, to. It's a process, but you try to at least work at it. You try to work at it. Ava DuVernay is here. We're talking about the movie. It's a new film, Origin. Mm -hmm. uh, written and directed by her. It's in theaters now. I saw it last night. I'm gonna keep saying it. You should go see this see movie. It. Very informative, very entertaining, well shot, tremendous acting. Um, even when it ended, the movie is two hours and twenty minutes. I didn't even realize that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it moves by because you're globe trotting around the world with yeah. the, with the very dope Antonio Ellis Taylor. Yes, uh, and she's taking you around the world. She's showing you all of these new ideas. She's investigating something. She's also, you know. In 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 a in a love story mm -hmm. within mm -hmm. it, and so there's a, there's a lot of things going on. By the time you look up, you will have learned some new things, and you would have traveled around the world. Absolutely, uh, Mike. You want to jump in? I'm gonna let you. Oh, okay, Mike Muse. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, yeah. Um, so uh, your constitution is so strong, and I love how you are talking about and describing the work of background actors and the cast system that exists um, within film. Also, too, is a juxtaposition that's happening right now in today's political world and political cycles. How do you hope uh, origin will inform this current political cycle, in particular as we are in this presidential cycle? Because I see origin as a political film. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, you know, we are, uh oh, I'm about to get on my soapbox. We are in a state of emergency, and it doesn't feel like anyone is paying, not anyone, enough people are paying close enough attention. Mm -hmm. This man, who just won the Iowa caucus, and it will be the Republican nominee, hands down, is saying every day on the campaign trail what he is going to do when he's president again. He's saying outrageous things that are dangerous to black and brown people and people mm -hmm. who believe in justice and dignity. Like he's given every day he goes on the trail and he says something not just crazy and wild like specific laying mm -hmm. down instructions in the same way that hitler did he was very explicit about what he was going to do mm -hmm. and this man is saying the same thing and yet you have many people in the country who will vote for him and many other people who will be affected by it who are not listening mm -hmm. and so it was important for me to get this film out in an election year just to contribute to a conversation try to ring the bell and say I mean, really specifically, like you will not be able to use you know, issues with your passport, issues with your movements, mm -hmm. issues with your bank accounts, issues with who he deems to be an enemy of the state and who he doesn't. If you're an artist, if you have certain points of view, like we got to listen to what's going on. Mm -hmm. it, it's serious. And so I'm hoping that this film gives people a new language, new words, new tools yes. to start to have those conversations and not just have conversations, take action. How do you feel those tools um, are important to empower like the voter um, as they begin to think about who they want to elect, right? Because I feel like some people are intimidated to engage in political discourse because they don't have the language. I mean, this election, it's, it's just a disaster. When we look at the top of the ticket, yeah, yeah. you know, I don't see good options. Um, it still doesn't mean that there aren't ways that we can assert our voices because you have a whole ticket, your local government, your state government. These are the things that really affect you in your city and where you are, right? They can defend against whatever's going on up at the top in the federal government, right? Mm -hmm. And they can, um, they, they, they basically inform your daily life and existence. These are things we, I feel like we need to tune into because I'm, uh, you know, unimpressed with, 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 with the choices. With the yeah. choices. Yeah. But we can't let that not inspire us to raise our voices. And also there are ways to organize outside of the voting process. You need to vote. But then also what are the other ways that we can organize ourselves, prepare ourselves, defend ourselves um, against some of these dangerous ideas? I mean, yesterday, what was it, four days ago, Nikki Haley yeah. said um, – there whenever it was racism in this, in country. this country. There is it now and it never was. And, and, and so that that goes out into the world yeah. and, and permeates throughout the country and it goes unchallenged. I mean, we should be, she, she should not even be able to fix her mouth to say those words mm -hmm. next time. And yet they're doubling down again. That's a double down on what a couple months ago one of them said uh, slavery was good for us. Yeah. It taught them some skills. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and so are we not challenging that are we not in in the streets in their phases on every airwave writing talking making art about this mm -hmm. to combat it that's the level it starts as words and then it becomes actions mm. and then it becomes policy and mm -hmm. then it becomes law and you look up mm. i'm not playing you look up and you your white rights are stripped from you all of and them and the rights yeah. that our people have fought so hard for why are you get me on a soapbox this morning <laughs> hey, what are you talking I mean, about I mean, I mean, I'm just trying to come hang out. No, you made the movie. <laughs> I jump in real quick. Matter of fact, yes. um, Ava, I'll never forget the first time you came here. You talked about how watching director commentary really helped you understand like the making, the filmmaking process. Yeah. So I was just wondering because I collect uh, physical media and I feel like it's an important thing yes. to really hold on because you you can get so many extras and bonus content through physical media that you don't get probably with streaming services. Is there a specific DVD or movies or, or movies in general that helped you that you can recommend people go watch if they don't want to? do the schooling or anything like that but just to give them that basic sort of understanding of the filmmaking process yeah well i'm glad you're championing physical media because you can't let the streamers dictate when and where, where you can see things you want to have it in your hands so you can control it so i think that's important whether it's vinyl dvds whatever blu-rays but um but i can't one doesn't come to mind but if you're interested in filmmaking there's a book by uh, Sidney Lumet hmm. called hmm. Making Movies. Write it down. Uh, and it is, it is. It's, he's a director. He was an older, older white man director. He, um, he uh, made The Wiz. 
and he oh, made many beautiful, oh. be- many beautiful films. But basically, it's his diary of like how he talks to actors and what he does when he goes on set. And I remember it was really inspiring for mm-hmm. me, um, just to read what other because direct- directing is is one of those jobs where no one, no one, no other directors see you do it. Mm-hmm. So if I want to be a director, how am I going to get on a set and watch another director do it? Right? Um, it's di- different than than many other positions where you can observe and train under someone. And so those DVD commentaries and books like that become important. Yeah, thanks. Ava DuVernay is here. I'm going to go to the phone lines and we're going to talk more about the movie Origin. X is on the line. X, uh, rise and shine. How you feeling, X? What's up, X? Rise and shine. I'm excited. Uh, how are y'all doing? How y'all doing? Feeling good, X. Yes. Go for it. Oh. Yes, uh, uh, Ms. DuVernay, uh, I, I love your work. Uh, I just want to say I, I loved Queen Sugar. It was like a family show that I watched Yay. with my parents. I love and uh, I'm, I'm so excited to uh, watch this new movie, Origin. But I just have a quick question for you. Um, so I, I, I started a film and production company, and I want to tell these beautiful stories. And as I'm waiting for the copyright on my name to come through, I'm getting this overwhelming feeling that, like, as a Black person, that... I'm scared that my that my company will come off too quote unquote ethnic, and I'm starting to question whether I, I chose the right name or if my stories like will will miss the masses uh, like in stories that should be heard by everybody. And I'm just wondering, have you ever had that feeling, and if so, how did you overcome it? It's a great question. Um, I don't know what the name is, but if it's something that mean that is meaningful to you. Um, you should keep it. I don't even know what it is. What she's going to say is going to be something crazy. I'll be like, change yeah, it, brother. Gonna, change, change it, brother. Change it. It's going to be shooter, nigga. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Yeah, no. Gonna change the name. We need to dust off no, your co- imagination. <laughs> what the, the name wow. of the company. What's the name? The name of the company is They Rolock, and it's basically colored backwards. Great. Mm. Oh, that's good. I, I think it's lovely. And I think that, <laughs> I think that you know, you, uh, you, you as an artist have to be uh, clear that as, if you are an artist and you're making work, you have to step into vulnerability. That's your job. Yes. You have to step into the dark space where there are lots of questions and you don't know how it's going to be received. When you step into that place and you make things authentically, that's what's going to connect. And so you cannot start compromising your vision before you even start it. You can't not start making it for other people and what they'll think. That's mm-hmm. not art. Art is express yourself. And so go with your first instincts and don't don't compromise. Just go hard. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. it. Uh, yeah. And I, again, congratulations thank on Thank you. Good luck to you. That's great. Hey, I appreciate that. Um, That's good. I want to, um, you, you mentioned, hold on a second. You mentioned Anjanu Ellis Taylor. Mm. Oh, girl. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. Killed. Mm-hmm. I couldn't stop looking at her mm-hmm. on that screen. Mm-hmm. The character she played, you know, um, Isabella. Isabel. Mm-hmm. Isabel. Um, wh- why? Why? Wh- what did you learn from the book, first of all? Mm-hmm. And then when did it trigger to you, I got to make this film? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, Anjanou Ellis Taylor, she's a magnetic, a magnificent, one of our best actors. She's never been the lead in a movie. Ever. Really? She's never been the lead in a film. Uh, and and this uh, in in her early fifties is is her was her moment and is her moment to really show just a small fraction of what she can do because the sister's limitless. Uh-huh. So I'm happy that you had that reaction to it. Why did I have to make the movie? Yeah, um, I read the book the first time and I didn't understand it. It, ir- it irritated me, it frustrated me that everybody else was reading it yeah. and they were like, it's great, it's great. I was like, why don't I? I was one of those. I don't get it. Yeah. I, I don't get it. So I read it again and I started to get That's it. Real. And it started, to, I don't think people really read it. That's a big I think, book. I, it's five hundred pages. Is. I think people were like, you know, read a few things yeah. and were like, yes, it's fabulous, but it wasn't really, I really wanted to understand it. And it's once dense. I, it is. And once I understood it, I was like, wow. Like th- there's some real information in here that that reveals the secret arcs of history. Like mm-hmm. There are things going on that have not been revealed, have not been shared, have been hidden on purpose. And a lot of that is in the book. So all my aha moments from the book, like every time I took out a pen to highlight, all those are in the movie. And there's there's some big, pretty, pretty, pretty shape shifting things in there. Things that mm-hmm. change my perspective. Mm-hmm. You know, talk about it, though. Like um, the what I found fascinating was the parallels made between India caste being in India uh being in South South Africa mm-hmm. and even here in America and the tie that was made to Trayvon uh Trayvon being Martin. killed mm-hmm. Trayvon Martin being killed um 
talk about that a little bit too, because I, I love. There was a scene in the movie where it talks about a part of the India population, the Delhi, mm-hmm. yep. and they're at the low end of the caste mm-hmm. system. These are the people who are not allowed. You can't. It's hard to get out of caste uh, if you even can. Yeah, uh, you could get murdered. You could get thrown in jail. Um, so many things could happen mm-hmm. if you violate the caste system. The untouchables. The, uh, yeah, and these people jobs for life is to clean out sewer systems Mm -hmm. with their hands with their hands Mm -hmm. today in 2024 with no protective covering with nothing but oils with just with oil that they put on each other i mean it's just you're right you know you you look at something like the murder of trayvon martin and you understand that you know he is murdered he is stalked by a latino man to protect an all-white community he's a black boy is that racism Right. Mm -hmm. Or is there something else happening there? Mm -hmm. Um, And that's what Isabel Wilkerson started to research. She's like, wait a minute. Everybody's calling this racism. But he's he's brown. The boy was black. They were in a white community. That's that's something else than just race. That's something else than just the privilege of status. That There's something else going on there. So she started to research caste and caste is really what all the isms sit on top of. That's why we call it origin. It's the root. It's mm-hmm. the base. It's the foundation. If you've built a house on top of a foundation, that is what all the isms are. All the rooms in the house, racism, sexism, uh, Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, homophobia, mm-hmm. all of those are rooms in a house. But the bedrock underneath it is caste, which is simply this idea that um, human beings must, in any situation, for some reason, create hierarchies. hmm Someone has to be better than someone else. Mm-hmm. It's just the way it works. And so you can't really solve for racism, sexism, all those things, unless you know caste underneath the way that it functions. Yep. It's a part of the equation. You're never going to get to the answer if you don't know all the pieces of the equation. So mm-hmm. it just adds a, a something to the math that we're doing to figure things out. Wow. I'm about to go see the movie again. <laughs> <laughs> Just is yes. evidence of the brilliance of Ava's filmmaking to take something that's very complex mm-hmm. and to make it so sticky. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. To make it easily digestible. Um, myself, my mom, and my sister, we have this like intergenerational book club. Mm-hmm. And Cast was the very first book that we tackled together. Mm-hmm. And we had to go slow. Yeah. Because there's, there's just so much to unpack. And then there's so much that you've been taught for so many years and then boom this truth bomb comes and you just have to make space to like hold it and then see yourself in such a different light i want to um get into some of the initial stages of filmmaking especially how you approach origin ava because to go from when you first are like okay we're going to let's do this you know let's take cast and let's turn it into this film an idea starts out very um amorphous right like you can't really it's intangible and then you have to work with so many different people to put it into something that is feels like a physical product of sorts who are those first couple people that you sit down with let's let's say the very first week Mm -hmm. of work yeah what does that look like yeah well it's a beautiful process because when you're making films you're working with hundreds of people to try to get to a certain end mm-hmm. so over the course of, of of filmmaking the writing for me it's a very solitary process but you're showing pages to people who you trust getting feedback um, for me on this process it was another filmmaker named Guillermo del Toro mm. uh, filmmaker a friend of mine named J.J. Abrams um, David Oyelowo who mm-hmm. played Dr. King in Selma is one mm-hmm. of my sounding boards uh, my cinematographer Matt Lloyd uh, you know this these, this was a group and my producing partner, Paul Garns. So this is kind of like my quorum of people that you know would push me a little bit. Then you get onto the set, and it gets bigger. Yeah. You have your production designer, a sister named Ina Mayhew. You have your, your, your people who are doing construction, building your sets. You have your editor who's getting the, the material back home, Spencer Avrick, and he's telling you, this take wasn't good, this looks great. And so you're constantly taking all this information in. And then it's the actors. My casting director, Aisha Coley, Black woman's casted mm-hmm. all my films. We're looking at actors. We're trying to find the right people. We're trying to interview actors, watch auditions, reach out to actors who I just want to work with who I've never met, reach out to actors that I've worked with before and I want to work with again. So you've got all these departments working. It's like I'm a mayor of a small town, mm-hmm. right? And oh. like the, and like you've got all of these different neighborhoods and everybody's doing their thing and I'm going around and just checking in and oh. you know writing tickets and scolding these people <laughs> and encouraging these people and getting it all to like this place. It's like a conductor where eventually there's music 
And um, but everyone has their own instrument. Yeah. And so you have to kind of get them on the same page. Ava DuVernay, it's such a pleasure. Yes. It's Thank always you. it's an honor. Truly. Yes. It's an honor to have you here. You are a tremendous visionary. And the stories that you make and you bring to that screen are awesome and necessary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think I could speak on behalf of all of us, right? Thank Absolutely. you for what you do. This movie, Origin, um, very powerful. It's extremely interesting. Really well done. It's one of those type of movies you should see every year, okay? Um, and so make sure if you can, citizens, if you get to the theater, support the movie. Uh, support Ava DuVernay and everybody involved. Thank you for coming by. Thank you so much. Yes. I appreciate it so much. Okay. Thank you. Ava. That's Ava DuVernay. We'll be right back. Stay four five.